Hi, this is Math 1350, video number three. I'm Mark Barsamian. The subject for today will be an example involving going from a description of the limit behavior for a function f to a graph of f. So we're still dealing with a graphical approach to limits. That's from section 2.1 of the book, and it's discussed on pages 92 to 96 of the book. Now let's recall uh, what we know about the correspondence between behaviors of functions and their graphs from video two. We have the idea of the y value of a function, and that has to do with this symbol, uh, f parentheses a, that tells you about the y value on the graph when x equals a. So if there's a point a comma b on the graph, that means that f parentheses a equals b. That means that when a is an input, b is the resulting y value output. Uh, a different idea was the idea of limit. This symbol, lim x arrow c of f of x equals l, spoken the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l. That had to do with this behavior. The graph of f appears to be heading for the location c comma l. So this symbol has to do with the trend, where the graph looks like it's heading, this symbol has to do with, um, is there a point on the graph? Now we had more specialized terminology of one-sided limits in video number two. The limit from the left denoted this way, the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x is l. That means the graph is heading for some location c comma l from the left. And the limit from the right, lim x arrow c with a superscript plus sign, the limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x is l. The graphical significance of that is the graph appears to be heading for a location x, y equals c comma l from the right. Now, um, we're going to do an important example of a type that's not discussed in the book. Uh, so given a, a description of the limit behavior of a function, sketch a possible graph of the function. Now, this is not discussed in any examples in the book, but I want to point out that this example is like um, uh, some examples that are um, in, in the textbook exercises. So if you look in the exercises for section 2.1, on uh, page uh, 103, um, look at exercises uh, 47, 48, 49, 50. They all have to do with uh, given information about the limit behavior of a function, sketch a possible graph of that function. So those examples are like the one that we're going to be doing. So here's our example. Sketch a graph that satisfies all of these conditions. There are three conditions listed here. Uh, f of 1 equals 3, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is 2, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x is negative 4. And our job is to sketch a graph that satisfies those three conditions. Well, we start by noticing that in the given information, three x, y locations are mentioned, just locations. So this symbol that we're given, f parentheses 1 equals 3. Well, that's about the location uh, x, y equals uh, 1, comma 3. In this symbol, that number 1 is an x value. That number 3 is a resulting y value. Uh, in this symbol, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is 2. That's about a location as well. It's about the location, well, that number one is an x-coordinate, and that number two is a y-coordinate. And this third symbol uh, is also about a location. Uh, this symbol one is the x-coordinate, and um, this symbol negative four is the y-coordinate. So there are three locations. So the first job is to identify those locations and then plot them on a single set of axes. Uh, 
So there are our three locations, 1, 3, 1, 2, and 1, negative 4. I just plotted them with open circles because they're just locations that we know we're going to be dealing with. Now, the next job is to add features to the graph that convey what the given information tells us about those locations. So the simple F parentheses 1 tells us that there's a point on the graph at 1, 3. So we will put that information on those axes. I'm going to make a copy of that graph down below so that we don't have to recopy the whole thing again. So our job is to uh, put a point on the graph at 1, 3. So we fill in that circle. OK, the symbol limit as x approaches 1 from the left equals 2 tells us that the graph is heading for the location 1, 2 from the left. So we can convey that on the graph by just putting a little, uh, little pigtail to the left of that location, heading for that location. Now the symbol limit as x approaches 1 from the right equals negative 4 tells us that the graph is heading for the location 1, negative 4 from the right. So we can convey that by adding this feature. We just add a pigtail uh, that's heading for 1, negative 4 from the right. So there is our graph with the, the given information those three conditions uh, satisfied. Now, um, here's a question. Can we fill in all of those open circles? I've only filled in this one. I haven't filled in these two. Well, for one thing, we were not told anything about whether or not there should be a dot at those open circles. But realize that if we did fill in another one of these circles, then for the, va for the x value x equals 1, there would be more than one y value. So the answer to this question, can we fill in all of the open circles, is no, because that would mean that for x equals 1, there's more than one y value. Now, what would be wrong with that, though? What's, what's wrong with having more than one y value for a particular x value? Well, the key to that is um, the, the definition of function. The definition of function is for a given input, there is exactly one output. And in terms of the graph, we would say that the graph would violate the vertical line test. All right, well, that's the end of the example. That's the end of this video. Uh, you only have two exercises to do uh, associated with this video. Homework three, uh, given the specified limit behavior, sketch the graph of F. Um, so I'll see you in video four.